With the ritual of the High Moon completed, Tyrande exited the Temple of Elune and sighed deeply. There just wasn't enough Moon Priestess stuff to do to keep her mind occupied from the thing that was troubling her. And that thing was that she knew the relationship between her, Malfurion and Illidan was changing. They were no longer just childhood friends. A competition between the brothers had started and was growing increasingly more intense. And the prize of that competition was her. It was flattering, in a way, if not also slightly insulting. She didn't want to hurt either of them. But, in the end, it was her that was going to have to choose. However, as she moved away from the temple, she noted a crowd had gathered. A fairly loud one, pointing and gesturing. So, out of curiosity, she stepped towards it. And then, she gasped as she saw a cage holding some strange creature. What is it? No one knows, sister. Moongard had to spellcast it several times to bring it down. Duranda then studied the beast. It was no dwarf, that was obvious. Probably at least a foot shorter than an elf, though twice as broad. It was clearly strong and clearly angry. But Tyrande did not feel disgust or horror towards it. She felt pity. Both the temple and Cenarius had taught her compassion towards living creatures, especially living creatures that wore clothing and were therefore likely to have some semblance of intelligence. He needs food and water. I've been given no orders for such, sister. That shouldn't require orders. The sentry raised an eyebrow and shrugged. The elders haven't decided what to do with it yet. Maybe they don't think it'll need any more food or drink, sister. That suggestion repulsed Tyrande. Night Elf Justice was so very draconian. If I bring some sustenance for him, will you attempt to stop me? You really shouldn't, sister. A beast is just as liable to tear your arm off and gnaw on that instead of whatever fare you bring. You'd be wise to leave it alone. I'll take my chances. And so, Tyrande walked off and headed directly for the nearest food merchant. She grabbed a jug of water and a bowl of soup, and then realised the creature was pretty damn muscly, probably needed a fairly hefty source of protein as well. So she grabbed a chunk of meat. The crowd had apparently got bored and dissipated by the time she got back, so that was good. Made things a little easier. As she approached, the creature glanced up at her, mostly eyeing the water, soup and meat she was carrying. He then sat up, and Tyrande hesitated. She needed to be very careful here, for the creature's sake. Any sudden moves from it in the nearby sentry would no doubt gut it without hesitation. So she slowly knelt down. Do you understand me? The creature grunted and then nodded. I've brought you something. The young priestess then held out the bowl of soup and the creature's hand very slowly stretched forth and to Tyrande's surprise, very gently took the bowl. So, much more at ease now, Tyrande handed over the water and meat. The green-skinned creature then went ahead and scoffed his face. Not exactly with the greatest of manners, but Tyrande didn't judge. Who knows how long it had been since he'd last eaten. But once it was all finished, the beast wiped its mouth with its arm and then grunted. Good. Bloody hell, said an actual word. Sister, you shouldn't be so near. He'll tell you, he'll do nothing. Tyrande then glanced back at the creature. Will you? And the creature just shook its head and did a little chest bump salute thing. Do you want anything else? More food? No. My name is Tyrande. I'm a priestess of Elune. For a moment, the figure seemed somewhat not interested in continuing the conversation, but then noted Tyrande's determination to wait him out. So? Brox. Broxigar. Sworn servant to the Warchief Thrall. Ruler of the Orcs. Well, that was a whole bunch of nonsense, Tyrande thought. What's an Orc? And what's a Thrall? Where are you from, Brox? How did you get here? The orc's eyes then narrowed as he clamped his mouth shut. Stupid, Tyrande thought. Of course the moon guard had already questioned him. No doubt harshly. Asking that question had just basically made her look like the good cop. Brox then picked up his bowl and held it out towards Tyrande, with his expression dark and untrusting. But a sudden flash of energy then coursed into the cage, burning the orc's hand, causing him to snarl and glare with a murderous gaze. Tyrande, are you safe? That foul beast didn't hurt you, did he? He had no plans to do me any harm, Illidan. Illidan stepped forward and frowned. I was only fearful for you. The beast is capable of... In there, he's capable of very little. And he is no beast. No, looks like no civilized creature to me. He was merely trying to hand back the bowl, Illidan. 
I'm sorry, Duranda. Maybe I overreacted. Though you must admit, few others even among your calling would have taken the terrible risk you did. You might not know this, but they say that when he woke up, he almost throttled one of the moon guard. The young priestess glanced towards the sentry, who reluctantly nodded. Failed to mention that bit, she thought. But still, it made no difference. Brox had been mistreated. I appreciate your concern, Illidan. But again, I tell you that I wasn't in any danger. Duranda then turned back to the cage and reached through the bars to grasp Brox's newly burnt fingers. Duranda, stay back. All of you. He needs healing. I know you didn't mean me any harm. I can mend that for you. Please. Brox growled, but only in a manner that suggested frustration at his lack of options. Duranda then studied the injury. Flesh on two fingers had been burned away, with a third red and festering. What did you do to him? Something I learned recently. It was something Illidan had not learned from Cenarius, that much was certain. This was High Elven sorcery. Obviously, Illidan Stormrage could be quite skilled in subjects that actually excited him, and Taranda was not so certain that she liked the fact that it excited him. Hear me, Mother Moon. Taranda then kissed the orc's fingers gently. Grant me the ability to ease this being's burden, to render whole what has been ruined. Fill me with your purity, your grace. Grant me the power to heal. Moonlight then encompassed the young priestess, startling Brox for a moment. But, to his credit, he continued to trust, and allowed his hand to be drawn into the glow. And then, poof, his hand was fine. Thank you, Mother Moon. I honour you, shaman. I'm in your debt. At that, Duranda's cheeks darkened in embarrassment. No idea what a shaman was, but she could sense Brox's gratitude, all the same. But, as she rose to her feet, she stumbled a little bit, and Illidan immediately grabbed her arm to steady her. Are you alright? I'm fine. It's done. Sister, may I have your blessing? Of course. As per the teachings of the temple, blessings of a loon were given freely, so Taranda didn't have much choice in the matter. She went ahead and blessed the sentry. Shaman, may this lowly one too have your blessing. Everybody looked at the orc, shocked, and then looked at Taranda. You need recuperation. You've done enough for this creature. But... Taranda went ahead and ignored Illidan's protest. She was on a blessing streak now anyway. May Illum watch over you and yours. May your axe arm be strong. The orc's peculiar response caused her brow to furrow for a second, but she then smiled. Thanks. However, as she rose to her feet once again, an overwhelming force of exhaustion hit her all at once. She needed to go to bed. Forgive me, Illidan. I'm tired. I'd like to return to my sisters now. Well, I'll escort you back. There's no need. I'd like to walk alone anyway. Illidan said nothing and simply bowed. And so, after one last smile to the orc, Duranda departed. <sighs> Duranda. Illidan had really wanted to talk to Duranda about his feelings. She needed to know. It was important. He'd waited for hours outside the temple, watching for her appearance knowing it would be weird if he'd joined her the moment she stepped out. So he'd hung back in the background for quite a while. Much less weird. Something I'm sure he was convinced was extremely romantic and not creepy at all. But his chance to put Taranda on the spot by confessing his undying love to her had been ruined. Not only that, but he'd been made to look like a villain by this bastard orc. With absolutely zero hesitation, words started to stumble silently out of Illidan's mouth loaded magical words. And behind him, the orc in the cage started to scream, roaring in obvious pain. And then, Illidan muttered the counter words, and the prisoner ceased its cries. And with that, the young night elf smiled to himself and swiftly buggered off. And I guess Brock's passed out or something, because we can't have a chapter where no one does that.